Hi everyone, welcome back. In this section we're going to look at triple integrals, but now we're going to look at them over cylindrical coordinates. So this might be a new coordinate system for some of you. Um, basically it's polar coordinates in the xy plane with the additional z Cartesian coordinate thrown in. So we're still describing points in three-dimensional space, it's just instead of using Cartesian or rectangular coordinates for all coordinates, we're going to use polar in the plane and a Cartesian coordinate for the height or the z-coordinate. Why would we use such a coordinate system? Well, let's look at a motivating example. We want to find the centroid of the region bounded by the plane and the paraboloid. The thing is, is if we go through and we set up the integral for this, maybe we'll set it up as a z-first integral. Then what we end up noticing is that the footprint is a disk in the xy plane. And it's this disk sort of down here. I'll sort of fill this in. It's this disk down here. That would be the footprint. And with a disk in the xy plane, when we go and do the 2d integral or the double integral, then we'd like to convert this to polar coordinates. So we would use polar coordinates. So rather than think about it as we do a z-first integral, we reduce it down to a double integral, and then we use polar for the double integral, we can think about just in the context of right at the very start, maybe we'll use a coordinate system which incorporates polar coordinates for the description of the point in the plane, the projection of the point down to the plane, but then we also have that third component which is the z component. And so that's what we call the cylindrical coordinates of a point in three-dimensional space. The cylindrical coordinates are given by three coordinates, r, theta, and z. And the r and theta value are precisely its polar coordinates in the plane, in the xy plane. So this is basically polar coords in the xy plane. How we find the point in space given these cylindrical coordinates r, theta, and z is, well the z is the, the easy one, that's the height, so it's just you know, what is the, the value of the height of that point. But in terms of the first two coordinates r and theta, they are just given by the distance, r is the distance to the z axes, and theta is the angle that is made between uh, the point and the positive x-axis. So they're shown here in the diagram. We've got the description of any point by its r value, its theta value, and its height, the z value. So r and theta are just given the point of uh, projection down in the xy plane, and then z is its corresponding height. So let's have a look at doing some conversions between rectangular coordinate systems and cylindrical coordinate systems. So we'll start with a point with uh, cylindrical coordinates 2, pi by 4, and 4. Let's see what that looks like. So we've got our point which is 2 units away from the origin. There's an angle of pi by 4 here. And then we go up to a height of 4. And so that's going to be a two units away. And then up to a height of four, that's two pi by four and four. Now we want to convert it to rectangular coordinates. So we have that x is r cos theta. And that means it's two cos pi by four. Or two times one over root two. Or root two. Y is r sine theta, which is 2 sine of pi by 4, again 2 times 1 over root 2 is root 2, and z, well it's just the z component of the point, which is 4. And so therefore that tells us that the rectangular coordinates of the point x, y, z are given by root 2, root 2, and 4. Let's do a conversion in the opposite direction. We'll go from 
uh, rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates. The main idea here is we just have to work with those first two coordinates. Those are the x and y values. So this tells us that x is negative 1 and y is equal to 1. We need to convert those to polar. We've got a sketch in the plane x, y. So negative 1, 1. There's our point. We can get our r value. Now we can just read these things right off the diagram, but maybe we'll, we'll go and say, well, how do we get our r value? Well, r squared is x squared plus y squared. That's the relationship between r and the uh, rectangular coordinates of the point. x squared plus y squared, that ends up being 1 plus 1 or 2. So that tells us that r is root 2. What about the theta value? There's our theta value there. Well, we have that tan of theta is y over x. And so tan of theta is equal to 1 over negative 1, or negative 1. We also know that the angle is in quadrant 2. So these two things combined tell us that if the tangent is negative 1 and the angle is in quadrant 2, then theta has got to be 3 pi by 4. So in other words, this angle is pi by 4. That's our reference angle. And so we're pi minus pi by 4, or 3 pi by 4. And so that means, so therefore, r, theta, and z is equal to root 2, 3 pi by 4, and a z value of 1. So that's just point conversion. Here's a point described in one coordinates. What is its description in terms of the other coordinates? Now let's go ahead and look at surfaces and their descriptions. So we've got a paraboloid, z equals x squared plus y squared. We would like to describe that in terms of cylindrical coordinates. Right now it's in terms of rectangular coordinates. What is it in terms of cylindrical coordinates? So the first observation to make is that if z is x squared plus y squared, well x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared for the polar coordinate component r. And so therefore we have that our description of our surface is now the set of all points r theta z where z is equal to r squared. So there's our paraboloid in cylindrical coordinates. It's a set of all points r theta z that satisfy this equation. Let's describe the surface whose equation in cylindrical coordinates is r equals 2. So it's a set of all points r is equal to 2. Well, we can get a sketch of this first of all. We might as well draw it. So let's have a feel for what this looks like. So this is a set of all points with the r value of 2. That means it's all points in space whose distance to the z-axis is 2. So draw a little r equals 2 there. And so it's all of these all of these points. So in other words, it's a cylinder. So this is a cylinder that opens along the z-axis of radius 2. That's a very nice description. So when r is equal to 2, when r is a constant, it's a cylinder. And now we can start to see where the term cylindrical coordinates came from. When one of our variables is a constant, in particular in this case when r is a constant, the corresponding surface is a cylinder. And so now let's just write down what the equation of this is in terms of rectangular coordinates. So r is equal to 2 means that r squared is equal to 4, but r squared is x squared plus y squared, so that's equal to 4. And there is our equation of that surface in rectangular coordinates. And we see that it's a cylinder. So there's just a couple of examples converting from points from one coordinate system to another and also converting equations of surfaces from one coordinate system to another. In the next part of this video, we're going to look at how to do integration in cylindrical coordinates. So see you in the next video.